If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this. People, what is the scariest, most terrifying encounter you've had in the woods, forest, outdoors, cabins, etc., in the middle of the night? I was coon hunting 34 years ago, got a late start and shot one around 9.30, as they were about 40.00 a coon I let the dog lose one more time, and bam she's gone, nothing. I got in the truck and drove slowly down a very quite rural road with my windows down and I heard her barking tree up a valley of a friend of my dad's. I drove through his pasture it's around midnight, and drove to the edge of the woods and parked the truck. I got out put my headlamp on and the clip and the gun, when I heard and felt on my neck a raspy noise that sounded like the longest exhale ever. I had driven through this field with my lights on and there was nothing but me and my dog about a one quarter mile up the hill, there. I knew then what ice water in your veins feels like. I set the gun on the passenger side sat down, started the truck and drove home. The drive out was terrifying. I never told my dad until many years later. The farmer called in the morning to say he had our dog, I'll always wonder what it was and what would have happened if I'd turned around. So I live in rural Ohio. Mostly farmland, with woodland in spots between. Growing up, I was blessed to have been born into a family with a lot of land. So that being said, I would normally be found wandering the paths through the woods we owned with my dog. And I got to know that particular section of wood like the back of my hand. I was always told to take care of the place, never to cut down a live tree, to litter, and to basically respect the land. Anyway, to the point of all of this, so we would camp a lot and have fires at the cabin we had built. Sometimes I will get this off feeling when it is really late into the night. Mind you, I'm not scared of the dark, I don't really believe in the paranormal because I don't really know much about it. But it's kind of that being watched feeling. I've had others tell me the same thing when we would let them camp or hunt on the property. I've heard things in the distance, like a donkey on the farm about a mile down from us going nuts, but I figure that was coyotes or other nightlife spooking them. So most things will usually flare up around midnight or 3 a.m., and you can hear the woods just sounding more busy than normal. It's only at this particular spot that our cabin sits. When I've hunted and camped in other spots around the property, I don't get that uneasy feeling. I asked my grandfather, when he was still alive, who had bought the land 30 to 40 years prior, about the location of the cabin and if he had experienced anything out of the ordinary. He just seemed to chuckle and say, those woods are very old, and left it at that. This experience occurred when I was 13 years old. It was around midnight. I had just finished reading a book and was about to turn off my desk lamp to go to sleep when I saw a shadowy person. It was fully formed and standing in my doorway, I could distinguish its hair, which appeared to be a woman's hairstyle, the outline of its face, body, and legs against the darkened hallway. The most prominent feature was her or its glowing white eyes. If you've played the mission in the first Call of Duty, Black Ops where Mason sees Wood's ghost or shadow after Wood's dies saving Mason, that's what this thing looked like but was feminine. I was frozen from shock and fear. We stared at each other for what seemed like a long time, then she turned and continued to walk farther down the hallway. I started sleeping with my door closed after that. I haven't seen it or her since, and it's been almost 10 years. I saw the spirit of a forest one night right in front of me in two forms. First, a main body that was like a furry rectangle, maybe three feet high, and the color of its fur, which was brown, made a spiral inwards to the center of the square. It had very thin, white limbs, just two thin white legs coming out of the square, and two white arms on both sides. It actually looked very elegant, much more than the description suggests. I bowed low because I didn't know what else to do, and when I came up, it was a little farther off in the shape of a large white furry thing, kind of like a dog but much bigger. It didn't move like a dog, though, the way it moved is hard to describe. The only thing I've seen move like that was a sort of fairy toad thing I met once in that same forest. It's kind of like their limbs are moving in circles, if that makes sense, it looks really strange. Me and a friend had decided to take a random day trip from where we lived, a small college town, to the nearest city, which was one to two hours away. I was driving my car the whole time. After walking around for a while, we met up with some other friends and hung out at their apartment. We ended up staying later than I thought we would, so by the time we left, it was well after midnight. I was a little tired but completely sober and was ready to get home, so we got on the road. My friend fell asleep in the passenger seat fairly quickly, and I was enjoying the drive, blasting music and singing along. The road I took is a narrow two-lane highway that curves up and down and around the hills of central Missouri. It is fun to drive, and I was going maybe 60 to 75 depending on the section of road, though I was paying very close attention, watching for deer or other animals in the road. 
About halfway through the trip, something huge runs out in front of my car, maybe 150 feet ahead. Thinking it's a deer, I quickly slow down, only to see a giant brindled dog, similar to a Great Dane but bigger. It is standing in the middle of the road, staring at me, but as I slow down, it leaps into the woods on the other side of the road. I am shaken and drive slowly and carefully the rest of the way home. I've never seen it again, but I will never forget it standing there, staring at me. I was camping in North Dakota in Wanigan Campground. I arrived as the sun was setting and started to pitch my tent. I planned to cook some food, but it started raining, so my dog and I went into the tent to wait it out. The rain never stopped, so we decided to get ready for bed. The sun was completely set. I started to hear the beating of a hand drum. Started at about 2150. There was one other tent pitched in the campground, so I thought maybe it was them and quiet hours were minutes away. The beat never stopped when the time hit 10. It was the same beat over and over again. This sight was set in the middle of a bunch of buttes, and the sound seems to come from the north side. I poked my head out, and my dog immediately jumped out and started barking. I quickly returned to my tent. I laid in my sleeping bag and planned to phase it out and try to sleep. I woke up at midnight and 2 am the drums were still there. I passed out for the night. I woke up again when some sunlight appeared, and the drums were gone. In the morning, we went to hike towards where the drums were coming from. We didn't see any sign of human activity prior. There are no woods around. This was in the middle of the Little Missouri National Grassland near the Ma De Hay Trail. I'll never forget that beat. A bunch of family members and I were camping at the edge of a campground near a very large and pretty well-known lake surrounded by hundreds of square miles of state-protected land. This place has many campgrounds, but we were in the farthest one from any type of civilization. It was right up against the edge of the state-protected land, where there is literally nothing but unbroken forest for at least a few hundred miles and people aren't allowed. We were there during a time of the season where it rains a lot and isn't very popular for camping, so there were only a few other people there, with nobody in between us and the forest. About 2 am one night, most of us were woken up by extremely loud knocks sounding like someone was slamming into trees with a large wooden baseball bat far into the forest. The knocks and the echoes from them made it obvious that they were definitely coming from very far away, but they were still so extremely loud that it sounded like, if it were to be done by a person, they would have had to be right next to us and using all of their strength. I know that there were no humans, no roads, and no machinery anywhere in that direction because it was such highly protected land. There is absolutely no way that any human could be strong enough to be knocking that loudly, and there's only one animal I know of that could be strong enough and is known for knocking on trees. We all agree that we heard a Sasquatch that night. I am 22 and have lived in the suburbs most of my life, but the last two years I have lived with my girlfriend near some forested Michigan state land. Nothing weird, I've always loved the forest and nature. Deer, fox, coyotes, and all I have seen around here are always welcome sights in their natural environment. Sometimes I have been scared by the occasional set of deer or coyote eyes illuminated by headlights. This was not that. I rolled into the set of houses that are surrounded by this land around 11 pm I see her neighbors all with their lights on, staring out their windows and searching for something. Guessing it was just a dog or something, I slowed down and began to pull into the long driveway. As I reached the foot of the driveway, I saw something I could not explain. It had legs like a deer but was much more muscular, but instead of the thin coat of a deer, it had a reddish-brown coat that was much longer and compared to that of a fox. Besides this, I move my eyes up the thing and see its face. It had a head covered in fur, but it was shaped like a human head and had long, hunting dog-like ears. I saw no eyes and no mouth before it ran off next to a mailbox. The decorative top of this mailbox goes up to my shoulder, and it went up to the animal's back despite it being on all fours. I am six foot two, so it must have been over five feet tall at its back. As it ran off, it had no tail and looked incredibly skinny. And that was it for my sighting of whatever this was. This took place almost two decades ago, and I am still very baffled by the experience. From what I remember, the time was past midnight as the moon was brightly overhead. It was your typical midsummer's night, cloudless with a bit of that sweet, gentle breeze. My girlfriend was lightly jogging, and I accompanied her on a mountain bike in an open field within a park that bordered her neighborhood. This was near the outskirts of town where there were still large swaths of open fields surrounded by old-growth woods and farmlands. We were talking lightly and getting ready to take the path that cut back into her suburb when we saw it. About 30 to 50 feet into a field of harvested corn, a black, opaque rectangular shape about the size of a front door seemed to just materialize above the stalks. The color was blacker than any shadow around us, and looking straight at it, I couldn't see depth. 
It appeared to be two-dimensional. We were both frozen, just observing the object hover silently. After a split second, this two-dimensional shape just rotated silently on its edge and then winked out of existence. For reference, just hold out a piece of paper flat in front of you, then rotate it until the side of the paper faces you. The best analogy is that if you have seen Arthur C. Clarke's A Space Odyssey 2001, the shape is eerily similar to that of the black monolith, but without any depth. That is what I am describing. Talking about it afterwards, we weren't terrified, we were just in shock. We tried to debunk it but couldn't. There were no obstructions, houses, or trees that could cast such a defined shadow into the field. The only light source was the moon, which was directly overhead. We dismissed it as a deer because it made zero noise and the shape was geometric. I always had a good connection with nature, despite spending most of my time in the city growing up and being really into IT, and this summer I got to live alone in my family farmhouse that was surrounded by forest. Obviously, I would take my bike and explore the surrounding farm fields and forests. I always had good experiences and never felt threatened, even at night, but today was a bit odd. I wanted to explore this remote part of the road. That was separated from any other farmhouses by a big forest. I go there, and I spot two deer, nothing unusual, besides the fact that they're not moving an inch or even turning their heads to track me. I just assumed they didn't feel threatened. I go to the spot, and I just feel this really uneasy vibe. I decide to still keep on exploring until I hear a weird feminine scream. Then I decide it's time to hit the road. Following my escape, I hear another similar scream, footsteps behind me as if someone were running, and the animals that I met when traveling to the stop haven't moved a single inch either. So this happened a few days ago. I'm currently taking care of a dog and three cats for a family while they're on vacation. I don't mind. I've taken care of pets before. It's extra money. Anyway, the house is on a little back road with other smaller back roads next to it. The houses are pretty close to each other. The family house has a small patch of wood behind it. I was at a concert with my friend, and I wanted to stop by the house before we went home. It was around 11.45 PM. I went inside and let the dog out the back door. I went onto the porch and looked over to the woods. There was a huge, perfectly square light in the woods. It actually looked like a window. It was like sunlight was being reflected perfectly in the woods. I could see perfectly in the woods, even though it was close to midnight. I was more confused at first. I thought it may have been a reflection from the porch light on a window. I carry a taser that's also a flashlight. I shined my flashlight on it and looked closer. It started to make less sense. No window reflection is that big. I got kind of freaked out and got the dog back in the house. I made sure the cats and dog had water before I locked all the doors. I ran outside and told my friend, who was waiting in the car. I wanted to go back and look at it and take a picture of it. She was too scared to go with me. I went back anyway. I went around the side of the house to look. It was gone. I had turned off the porch light. It started to make even less sense the more I thought about it. It wasn't there the previous night. And it's been two nights in a row now that I haven't seen it. If I see it again, I will upload a picture. It still doesn't make sense to me. Can somebody please explain what I could have seen? The youngest daughter of the family is terrified of their woods, and she won't really explain why. She just said she heard strange noises back there. Something about those woods does creep me out. My grandparents have woods, and I used to play back there all the time as a kid. The woods never really freak me out. This area of wood just gives me a weird vibe. So last night, I awoke at around 3 a.m. after going to bed at 12. I went to get some water and sat back down on my bed, staring out my window. I live in a heavily wooded area in New York, not the city, so hopefully that helps set the scene a little. So I was looking out my window, and there are many trees visible outside my window. As my house is on a cliffside, I'm kind of in the middle of the 30-foot tall trees. The window I was looking out of overlooked the cliff, and the trees were right in front of me. The moonlight illuminated something on one of the trees. It was a humanoid-like figure, and its features were barely visible through the darkness. I looked at it in fear, as it was about 7 feet tall but appeared to be crouched down on the sturdy branch. After about 10 seconds, it turned its head and looked at me. Its eyes were red, and it stared at me for about another 10 seconds, and then it looked like it fell off the branch. I rushed to the window to see what had happened to the thing, but it took off into the bushes and greenery of the forest floor. It moved fast, I saw the bushes moving as it got further away in the moonlight. I'd like to know if anyone knows what this creature is. I believe in the paranormal, but I haven't yet had any encounters with anything besides this. I did some shallow research and believe what I saw was possibly a Wendigo, although I'm still not sure at all. 
I was camping in the Adirondacks by Lake George. In the middle of the night, I heard quiet, heavy footsteps. I was mad because I was wondering who would walk so late at night in the middle of the woods. When I go camping, I don't want to see any other people, if possible. The footsteps were soft and heavy, if that makes sense, and you could tell it had two legs. Luckily, I was too tired to freak out or care. Then my foot got tapped by the tent wall. I whispered to my friend, but I knew that was a waste of time. In my mind, I said, we are leaving in the morning. We mean no harm. I decided to let it go and not worry about it. I was too tired. It wasn't until the morning that I started to think about the whole thing. What stood out were the footsteps and the steady pace, like it knew where it was going. Also, the tap felt intelligent. Like it was saying hi. But I wouldn't trust that, nor would I ever go looking for them in the woods. I know raccoons can tap and maybe deer can, but I know what I heard and felt. It was either a person in the middle of the night tapping on a tent, a Bigfoot, or a dogman. This happened to a friend of mine, G, who encountered a cataplepas, a Greek mythical beast, while he was driving on the curvy road in Malaysia. The beast just hops from thick jungles to the left, right in front of his car, and hops back into the forest on the right end, imagine three giant hops. For those who are in Malaysia, it's the road leaving Genting Highlands to Kuala Lumpur. Now I know this sounds incredibly stupid since we're from Malaysia and Greece is F king far away, but according to our local shamans, aka Bomo, all of these mythical creatures are actually elemental spirits that protect the jungle, forest, etc. And sometimes, if you are lucky, you'll get to see them. Most of the time, they prefer to stay in their realm unless we disturb their properties. Now I am a huge fan of the paranormal, and I actually have an aim to find our own Bigfoot in Malaysia, Orang Mawas, but the same shaman told me that it's not possible because they are elemental spirits as well. Oh, and that means Bigfoot, Yeti, and other similar creatures too. So yeah, this is a local belief, but I can't find any articles or stories relating Bigfoot to elemental spirits. Can anybody tell me if there's a nugget of truth in that? Or has anybody encountered a mythical beast before? This is something that happened a couple nights ago at a cabin my family and I were renting. My sister and I were sitting outside on the back porch around 11 p.m., maybe getting closer to midnight. We were talking when we heard a noise, and to me, it sounded like someone was clapping their hands. Kind of like the conjuring, that's what it reminded me of. No one was outside, and the neighbors were pretty far down the road, so if it were someone, they would have had to walk all the way to the house and be standing pretty much right outside of it. The rest of my family were talking inside the kitchen, we could hear them, and if they were the ones clapping, it would have been obvious. We heard it happen three times in three different places. Once right next to the house, once in front of us, which would have been in the back in the woods, and the third time came from the front of the house. I don't really know how to explain it. It was pretty creepy. I live in central North Carolina, about an hour from an area called the Devil's Tramping Ground. For some background on what this is, it is a large circle in the woods where nothing grows. It is said to be where the devil paces at night, plotting his schemes. Hence, nothing grows there. If you spend the night in the circle, it is said that various unexplained things happen to you, like waking up outside the circle or hearing or seeing things you cannot explain. So I am now 30 years old. However, when I was 18, some friends and I decided it would be a good idea to go here at midnight one night. The GPS leads you to a gate, you have to walk into the woods in a good way to even find the circle. We had one flashlight for the whole group. The trip wandering around the woods was by all means terrifying. We finally found the circle, and sure enough, it was a circular patch of dirt where nothing was growing smack in the middle of the woods. We hung out for 15 minutes or so and heard animals, but nothing really out of the ordinary happened. We decided to leave, but when we got back to the car, it felt like something was watching us. Hard to explain, but just the feeling you get when you are being looked at. My friend was driving, I was in the passenger seat, and there were two friends in the back seat. We drove for about 5 minutes and came to a four-way stop. There was a street light providing some dim illumination. At the corner of this four-way stop, there was a daycare. In the daycare, there was a swing set with four swings. Three of the swings were still, the other was moving like someone was in it. It wasn't moving violently, like they were swinging hard, or gently, like they were barely moving, but somewhere in between. All of us in the car saw it. The only logical explanation can be that some type of large animal that we didn't see brushed against it as it ran away when we pulled up to the stop sign. However, it was swinging like someone was there. Not side to side as if it were hit as it was being run past. Nor did it slow down as we watched, but it kept steady. What could it have been? Around 2011-2012, 
my friends and I had multiple encounters with orange lights. We often walked around the neighborhood, and it started one night when we all noticed an orange glow emitting from one of the stretches of wood we were walking by. We stared at it, but couldn't understand what it was. It was a floating orange orb, suspended in mid-air. It was almost like a candle light, but it did not flicker. It did not move. It was just frozen in the air. We tried to rationalize what it was, but quickly dismissed every explanation we came up with. It didn't move or flicker, so it couldn't be a lighter or candle. The wood was too thick for it to shine from the other side. There was nothing to reflect light off of. It seemed self-emitting and not attached to anything. We would have walked up to it, but there was water in front of the woods, and the land was too swampy to walk through. Soon after, the same friends and I saw the same looking light fall from the sky. We were walking around in the same area around midnight and saw the orange light dance around the sky before slowly descending behind the trees. The third and final encounter was a few months later. We were walking back to my house around dusk when I spotted that familiar orange light in the sky. This time it was stationary again, just sitting motionless in the sky. We stared for a few seconds when suddenly a second light materialized directly next to it. Then a third, and a fourth. As a new light would fade into existence, the first light in the line would fade away. It was creating a string of lights across the sky. On the other side of the sky, more lights faded in and started forming a line towards the first string. I thought they were going to connect, but before they did, all of the lights faded out. This occurrence made the news and was apparently spotted all over southwest Florida that night. I lived in a forested part of a coal mining town where my grandfather built a log cabin. As a teenager, I didn't sleep much, for whatever reason. Because of that, I would go for walks at night. Nothing too strange ever happened except an occasional whistling noise that I would only hear during my walks, not when I'm sitting on the deck or wandering the yard. I'm not sure if this is even related to the following event. One night, I was talking with my grandfather in his office about that unfamiliar sound. He usually always had an answer, but not this time. We joked around about its possible origins, and then I said goodnight. My phone had been dead for a few hours at this point, but midway down the steps, it turned on and started playing Walking After Midnight by Patsy Cline, but only the I'm always walking, after midnight, searching for you part before shutting off again. My phone has been dead for at least two hours at this point, and that was not the last song I was listening to. I tried turning it back on to see if maybe I was mistaken that it had died, but it flashed the dead battery symbol for a moment before going black again. Then my grandfather, whose office is only a few feet from the steps, calls out another fun fact, Patsy Cline died in a plane crash on my birthday. Obviously, I didn't go for a walk that night, or at all, until I got a dog. We live in Poland on the Czech border, this is relevant because there aren't many large, predatory mammals around. A few nights ago, we took our off-road vehicle into a nearby forest that we've been in many times, day or night. We parked up and walked across a bridge to the other side of the woods, which are surrounded by mounds, probably Old War trenches. The first thing I notice is the complete silence, the only sound was the crunching of dead leaves as we walked. The second thing I notice is that all of the grassy plants and shrubs on the ground have been crushed and are facing in the same direction, as if a herd of buffalo came down from the mounds and trampled them. As we're walking closer to the mounds, suddenly we hear this heavy thud on the ground, 5 meters away from the mounds, like a 60 kilogram weight just landed. We don't see or hear anything else. We decide to go back to the bridge, which is 20 meters away. When we get there, still on the side of the mounds, we stop and shine our flashlights at the forest, we don't see or hear anything. About 30 seconds later, we begin to cross the bridge still with our flashlights pointed at the forest, but now, in a bush about 3 meters away, there are two sets of round, yellow eyes staring at us. The first set of eyes is 1.5 to 2 meters from the ground, and the other set is about 1 meter. We had just shined our flashlights in that exact spot and were still in earshot of this bush. How did this thing move so quickly without making noise? We walked the rest of the bridge backwards while shining lights at this bush, the whole time these eyes were watching us, and jumped into the vehicle and GTFO. Luckily, it didn't follow us. Whatever this was, I stopped, stared, and stayed behind the bushes on the other side of the bridge. I can't tell if it was after us or if it was just making sure we left its side of the bridge. We went back yesterday in the daylight, there were no animal prints near that bush and no signs of disturbance, although we did find some animal bones on top of the mounds. I searched online, and someone suggested a crawler. Does that sound right? Any other ideas on what else this was? This occurred in the summer of 2010. My stepdad has an old hunting cabin out in Ziegel, Pennsylvania. Like a 10-minute drive outside Cook's Forest. 
It's a small place with a common area or kitchen and a single bedroom with two bunk beds and a queen-size bed. My mom, stepdad, and I stayed at the cabin for a weekend to get rid of all the trash other family members left there and also do any repairs. There are other cabins nearby, but this weekend, there was nobody else at cabins within a half mile. There are also no street lights or even cell service. This is quite literally off the beaten path. Middle of the forest. We came up Friday, worked all day Saturday, and left Sunday. Saturday evening, after dinner and a bonfire, everything is pitch black outside, no bugs chirping, and dead quiet, which is relatively normal. At least most of the time, it's pretty quiet at night. We decide to head in for the night. Stepdad and I are inside reading, while my mom steps out to have a smoke and check to see if the fire has burned down safely. As I am midway through my book, I hear my mom yell pretty loudly. Now I'm used to her making this yelp. She's done it when she sees a snake or gets a bug in her hair, so I didn't think much of it. She comes in limping, saying, someone threw a rock at me. Immediately, my stepdad grabs his gun and runs outside, hoping to catch who did it. I was in shock, not sure what to think. I'm sitting with my mom while he makes laps around the cabin. He fired a few shots at the backstop we have set up on the back of the property to scare off whoever is around. Both never said they saw anyone run off or even make noise. Now, when we go up, we always make jokes about Bigfoot. And to be clear, there were no cabins on the road near us that had people staying at them, so I don't know who would be lurking in the woods in pitch blackness, fooling with people. About four years ago, I was attending a college in southern Arkansas for my bachelor's in biology. My then girlfriend and I didn't have much money, so we shared an on-campus apartment so our scholarships would cover the rent. This complex was on the outskirts of campus, right next to a rather large pine forest that some people went to to smoke, but you could always hear them. In between the forest and our apartment was a dirt parking lot. Our apartment sat on the first floor of the complex, on the side closest to the tree line. We came back to the apartment after grocery shopping one night. After bringing all the groceries in, I decided to sit out on the patio, looking at the forest and the night sky. It was a nice, spring Arkansas night with not a cloud in the sky, so this didn't surprise my girlfriend. She went inside, and I sat down. As I'm listening to the whippoorwills, I notice a green light coming from just behind the tree line. It was blinking relatively slowly and looked as if it were around someone's neck, and that thing was digging. Not digging with a shovel, but more animalistic. Like a wild boar digging for grubs. It was making no sounds and seemed to be minding its own business. As I'm watching this thing very intently, a car pulls into the dirt parking lot, briefly flashing its headlights over the light. At this point, the light stood up, turned solid red, and darted in a straight line through the trees away from the car. Not like a deer running through the trees, mind you, but straight, without moving. I estimated that it probably moved about 40 to 45 miles per hour. Needless to say, I did not sleep that night. The next day, I got up early and went to investigate where the light was. There was a small opening next to a creek where I estimated the light was coming from. However, there were no signs of digging or tracks of any kind. I walked in the direction the light fled to. The clearing quickly went back to being a thick understory made up of lots of scrub oak, greenbrier, and limbs. I could barely walk through without getting cut up, and I certainly couldn't walk in a straight line. I do not know what I saw that night. I've certainly never heard of anything like this, and I've never seen that light again. I talked to some of my wildlife management friends to see if they had tagged some animals with an LED collar or tag, and they looked at me like I was crazy. Doing so would make no sense and would reduce the survival of the animal. So what was it? An ET? A lost spirit? A person? Or an animal? I guess I won't ever really know for certain. This was a couple years ago in my hometown. I grew up in a very small farming village in northern Ontario, and cottage season had just ended, so it left most dirt roads like mine empty for the most part. The house I grew up in was surrounded by dense forest. I had a friend over because my mother went out for the night, so we decided to do the usual, smoke copious amounts of weed, and play video games. Midnight was approaching, so I thought it would be a good idea to take the dogs outside to do their last business for the night. We let the dogs out, watched them run into the forest, and decided to have a cigarette while we waited. About 10 minutes go by, so I think it would be a good time to call them back. I gave a sharp whistle, waited a couple moments before giving another whistle, and I saw my Great Dane and Little Pug come running around the dark corner. All of a sudden, I hear a sharp whistle exactly like mine, almost like a mock whistle, coming from about 15 feet from us in the dark forest. Me and my friend both looked at each other at the same time, looking like we had just seen a ghost. The dogs, instead of barking, 
whined and perked their ears up, which was unusual for those two. We ran back to the other side of the house, back up on the deck, calling the dogs. Just as we're all about to get inside, I hear another sharp whistle. This time it was very abrupt and sounded like it was almost under our deck stairs. My pug started to head towards the stairs and dodged me out, but luckily my friend grabbed her before she got to the end of the deck. We got inside, locked all doors, and stayed up literally all night, with bats and a horrible sword I got at a fall fair one year. The thing we thought was incredibly weird was the fact that when we took off running, whatever whistled back got under my deck or stairs without making a noise and startled both my dogs. If it was a person who's really freaky, why were they out in my forest when there are literally no houses near me for a couple kilometers? I've also heard older native people within the community tell stories about how you shouldn't whistle at night because it can bring unwanted spirits. Nothing has happened since, though. My friend and I were driving back to his house in eastern Virginia. We both grew up in the area and had spent years driving up and down these roads. It was around 11.30 at night, we had just finished a gym session and a fast food run. The night was warm and dark, we had the windows down, music up, and driving fast on back roads. Not many other drivers were out, and we didn't see any cars throughout this event. Coming around a corner, our headlights swept over an old woman out getting her mail, odd, being near midnight. Naturally, she turned to look at us as we passed. As soon as her eyes fell on us, I froze in my seat. I was overcome with a sense of dread. I'd never been much afraid of anything, but in this moment I froze in fear. I had a clear impression that something out in the woods had seen us, and we drew its attention. Whatever it was felt big, powerful, and old. Not like a ghost, the best word I can think of is demon. There was a strong feeling that this thing desired us in some way, that it wanted to take us or have us, and that this would be a very bad thing. In the same moment, without either of us saying a word, my friend slowed the car way down, turned off the music, rolled the windows up, and straddled the double yellow line. We continued in silence for probably three to four minutes, going a mile or two until we turned off the road. This whole time, all my hair was on end, my body shook, and I felt some being stare, it felt, into my soul and try to reach for it. We turned off the road, the feeling of danger gradually faded, and minutes later we parked in his driveway. We sat in silence for a minute, then I asked if he felt that, he said, yes, I was so scared. We talked about how we felt, we both had the same impressions. I then got into my car, sped the whole way home, repeated the entire experience alone, and made it back safe. Two weeks later, I was headed to his house, this time around 3 p.m. bright summer day. Passing through the same area, it happened again. Identical feeling. I drove that road every time I went to see him, before that incident, in between the two incidents, and many times since then. I've never had any other experiences. I can't write it off as some hormonal fluke, as we both felt the same fear without speaking about it. Has anyone experienced something similar? Does anyone have any idea what it could be? My best word for what I felt is demon, but I have no clue if that's accurate. White creatures in the woods at night. I have seen hundreds of these things at night in the woods in the rural areas around Memphis, starting around 2020. They are tall humanoid creatures with blacked out eyes, and they move slowly and in strange, jerky movements. The first time I saw them, I was visiting a veteran friend of mine who was down on his luck about midnight on Thanksgiving Day in 2020. He had been living in a run-down camper vehicle at the edge of the woods on his brother's property. Between his camper and the tree line were the remains of an old trailer that had been destroyed by a tornado, with a street light on top of the pole that was used to run electricity to the destroyed mobile home. On the other side of the pole was approximately 15 yards, meters, of a field that an old dirt road split in half with tall grass and brush at the edge of the far side of the field, after which the tree line started. I thought they were people hiding at first, as they seemed to be grouping more in the darker areas where the light from the pole was not as bright. I asked my friend about them, and he shrugged it off and said that they were always there and didn't bother him. He also told me that no matter what you did, you couldn't get close to one. So being a combat veteran with two deployments under my belt and my personal firearm in my vehicle, I attempted to approach these things. As I got closer, I noticed that they were solid white creatures with solid black eye sockets that moved in a jerky but very slow manner. There had to be 50 or more in that field, down the dirt road, and at the edge of the tree line and beyond. Determined to let something duck around and find out, I continued to walk towards them, and all of a sudden they all looked at me with black, empty-looking sockets, which instantly caused me to feel more fear than I have ever remembered having in my life before. I did not approach them that night, I turned away, got out of the area, and took my buddy with me to stay a few days at my place. Since that first time I saw them, I have seen them about a dozen times, 
always at night and around wooded areas in all different locations. I have since tried to run and catch them, but failed because the creature simply disappeared the moment I closed in within 5 to 10 yards and lost direct eye contact for a mere flash. It's like they can phase in or out or something. If you get close, you can see that the weird jerky moment is parts of them, arms, legs, and head, disappearing and then reappearing in a different position. I think they disappear anytime they move, so they cannot be seen if they walk. I have pumped 45 5.56mm incinerary rounds from my AR-15 into one without a single shred of evidence of it left behind. These things do make audible noise that can be recorded but do not show up on video from a cell phone or old analog camcorder with cassette tapes. Animals also see them, however, I have tried to show them to people, and only about half of those I have shown have seen them. I have wondered if I was losing my mind and if anyone else has seen them and or tried other experiments with them. I have searched all over the internet and only found a few cryptid creatures that share one or two similar things with them, but nothing that was close enough for me to be satisfied. The only thing that was really close was the origin of white zombies, sort of. There's been a few people tell me about this shape-shifting creature, but they don't change or bleed. They seem to be different sizes, some larger, some smaller, and they group up in what I have come to call family clusters, four to five of them, usually with two taller ones and one or two smaller ones. Please let me know if you have any ideas on what they could be or if you have seen them before. I've been counseling at camp for the past two weeks. We've been running camp on some new land this year and are paying for eight weeks on the 40 acres. It's been really weird, to say the least. This past Wednesday night, we took all of the kids, ages 7 to 12, out of the cabin circle to sleep under the stars for a night. It's a bit of grass surrounded by forest, with a small activity shelter and fire pit. I ended up sleeping on the grass, nearest to the forest, because my cabin of kids left me no room on the tarp. At one point in the night, I turned my head to look into the forest. I had the sensation of someone looking at me, but it didn't feel bad. I saw a smaller white light floating, orb-shaped dot I swear, I couldn't peel my eyes from it for at least 5 minutes. Finally, I shoved myself into my sleeping bag, and not long after, I peeked again. It split into three, it looked like it had shattered. This time it felt eerie, and I hid again in my sleeping bag. The final time I peeked out, it was gone. Nothing but a dark night forest. But there was a sensation of something breathing down on me with super cold breath. This was the final time that night that I shoved myself back into my sleeping bag. The next morning, I asked around, and three other counselors saw the orb and felt the breath. My question is, what the hell did I just experience? During the year 2018, I had several paranormal experiences. One of the two that stand out to me as the most prolific is the entity I saw in a tree line whilst on a walk. This time in my life was tumultuous, so I spent much of my time trying to help my mental health with lots of outdoor therapy. I walked at least once a day for miles at a time, mostly in my immediate neighborhood. My favorite time to go walking was at night in the summer when it was cool and there weren't many people out and about, mostly allowing me to just breathe and embrace silence. One night, as my normal routine commanded I do, I stepped off around 2100 hours. It was a moonlit, warm, and comfortable summer night, genuinely perfect on all accounts for a long walk. As I recall, this night I decided not to listen to music or mess around with my phone, mostly because I just wanted to think and enjoy the time I had to myself. I also sometimes did this because I wanted to be more attuned to my surroundings because people are crazy. I decided I would take my longer route that brought me to the biggest park in town with some really nice trails behind that I dared not walk at night because that was way too dark and scary. This night, I did not need to find fear on the trail. As I marched forward up the winding road to the park and further into the actual confines of the park, I decided to walk alongside one of the surrounding tree lines. In all reality, I was about 20 meters, or so, away from the trees and moving at a leisurely pace. I was looking around and enjoying the pleasant night so far when I saw it. Walking along the trees directly parallel with me at my same pace, there was something completely dressed in white, clear as ever in the moonlight. For whatever reason, I did not panic and I did not run, but I continued to walk for a moment, watching it as closely as it was watching me. I finally stopped in my tracks and froze with fear as my rationale started to slip. I then simply lost track of it once I realized that I had turned back around and began to run back towards the entrance. I made it there and was truly thankful that whatever that was was over. Whatever I saw then has truly stuck with me, and I think about it very often. It just didn't make sense and truly intrigues me to this day and really started to upheave my belief systems at the time. I think the scariest part is how closely it mimicked my movement and the fact that I could just feel the heaviness in the air. Since then, I have had multiple truly unexplainable, 
from what I can come up with, paranormal experiences. These include audible whispers while awake that others can hear, figures watching from windows, and other phenomena. This was back in around 2012, when I was a teen. Around this time, I'd spend the summer on Lake Conroe in this middle-class subdivision near the resort, backing up to the lake. I'd go on walks often and was used to seeing wild animals like owls, ravens, falcons, rabbits, your occasional fox, and deer. I haven't been back since my grandma sold the house. At around 9.30 p.m., I was walking around the neighborhood when I spotted a doe. She was across the street, where the main street that loops around crosses with another residential street, walking out of a patch of woods. It was normal to see deer around there, like I said, but this time it felt different. She was really big and thick in stature and muscle mass, and she had a thicker neck and big cheeks. It's almost like a cow head. She just stood there in the middle of the street, and I stood and watched her. There was a street light overhead, but street lights were sparse there, making everything around her very dark in contrast. We both stood there for about a minute, and she didn't look at me. Then she walked away slowly into another patch of woods on the other side, but not like how a deer normally trots, but like a person with four legs would. I'd never seen the joints above the hoof move like that. I was never scared, but I felt kind of quiet on the inside. When she crossed into the woods, I thought to myself, what a weird deer. I don't know if this was a deer or a deer with a disability or a genetic defect, but it stuck with me. The moment was ethereal. What do y'all think? I was 17 when this happened. I grew up in a small northern city that borders the wildly undeveloped Canadian North. In my youth, I spent a lot of time unsupervised in the woods, and I've grown comfortable but not complacent about what's in the woods. I think they are beautiful, and I think they need to be respected. I have been injured and in danger many times in the woods, including at night, so I'm always cautious and aware of my surroundings. This particular November evening, it was late, and I was walking to a friend's house in the city limits. Because my city is so underdeveloped, big chunks of it are still tendrils of forest that loop around the neighborhoods and connect back to the outskirts of town. My friend's house was right next to one of these small bits of forest, and the forest was actually a common shortcut that people took, with a path and everything. It was pretty late and cold but there was a thin layer of snow on the ground that reflected light, so I wasn't afraid of going through the forest path to get to their house quicker. So I was on the path, completely alone, and I could see everything in the forest quite clearly because of the light reflecting on the snow. It was below freezing, and I could see the puffs of my breath as I exhaled. Suddenly, I felt the compulsion to stop walking and look up at the trail ahead of me. There was nothing there, until suddenly, a puff of breath appeared out of nowhere, maybe three meters ahead. Something invisible had just breathed out, and all I could see was its crystallized breath. I stood as still as I could and didn't breathe. I held my breath as I watched the puff of breath quickly float up and fade. Nothing was around. Although dark, the snow on the ground reflected well enough that I could see the path well enough that I didn't even need my phone flashlight. After a minute or so, I walked forward and called out to see if anyone would answer. I got out my phone flashlight and looked around for an animal that could have breathed out the puff of air, but nothing. It was only me in the woods, but that wasn't my breath. Eventually I continued on to my friend's house, and I have since used that path many times without issue. I still can't figure out what could have breathed out that air without me being able to see its body. It is definitely a mystery to me to this day, but another reason to always respect the forest. I'm pushing 60 years old now, and I've had a lifetime filled with unexplained experiences. Here is one of them. My partner of 27 years and I live quite remote, 20 miles from the nearest town. We have very few neighbors, so we know this dog does not belong to any of them. The first time we saw him, he was standing at the crossroads where we turned right to get to our gate. To the left lived an elderly couple. We were returning home from town, and it was close to midnight. My partner slowed down. At first, we thought it was a small cow, but when we got closer, we saw it was a big black dog with glowing red eyes. Assuming it was dumped and being compassionate towards animals, we tried to coax it to come to us but it wandered or trotted off towards the couple's house. The next day, we found out that, while we had been in town, the woman had died. We were so sorry to hear it, and we had forgotten about the dog and made no connection between her passing and the dog. A few months later, again, we were on our way home, and again, we saw the big black dog. I said to my partner, oh my god, look. It's that same black dog we saw before. There he was standing at the crossroads again, and again we tried to coax him and again he turned and vanished in the shadows, this time towards another couple's home about one quarter mile west of us. We were up late that night, and a few hours after we got home, an ambulance came past our place. To theirs, the old man had died. 
every dog in the area was howling. Not growling or barking, they were mournful howling. So time went by. I never saw the dog again for at least two years. Then one day I was inside washing dishes, and my partner was in the basement, and I heard incessant barking outside my door. I went to the door, and there was that dog. That big black dog was barking at my door. So I said, what is it, boy? What is it? And he turned and walked off. So I returned to my chores, and suddenly there he was again barking at my door. So I did the same thing as before, and again, he turned and walked away. Again, I returned to my chores, and a third time the dog returned barking at my door, so this time I was resolved to follow that dog. I laid down my dish towel and stepped outside. I followed him approximately five steps, and the dog just vanished. As I stood there in shock, my eyes seeking every direction, I thought, where did he go? Where did he go? My partner ascended from the basement. I exclaimed, did you see him? Did you hear him? He asked me, see who? I said, the black dog. He was here, he was just here. Then solemnly, he said to me, Jim died. I was all like, what? Jim died. He repeated it to me. He had come up from the basement to tell me that his best friend Jim's son had just called him to tell him that Jim had passed away. I was in shock and totally speechless. I hugged my partner, and as I did, a revelation in the form of a question flushed through my mind, is that why the big black dog was barking at our door? Several months later, I was watching a program about the legends of Scotland and Ireland, and there it was, the legendary black shuck, the Bargast, or the Grim, who came in the form of a big black dog with red glowing eyes to announce the deaths of friends, family, and loved ones. He is usually seen standing at a crossroads. Sometimes children who were lost in the woods would find their way home only to tell their parents that a big black dog appeared, led them to safety, and then disappeared. So, being as my mother just happens to be Scotch-slash-Irish and my partner is Irish, if you ask me, the black dog is more than a legend, he is real, and we have never seen him again, not once since that day back in 2002, and nobody we know has died since either. I live in a rural, but not isolated, area in the Midwest. My window is up against the forest, which is about 50 or 60 feet away from the tree line. My window is about 20 or so feet above ground level. I heard what I am convinced was a low, echoing, humming-like song from the woods. I have heard turkey, coyote, fox, deer, squirrel, and so on before. Their cries, calls, and barks. This was none of those. As I lay there in bed and began to concentrate on the sound, I couldn't shake the mental conclusion of woman singing. The sound persisted for about 15 to 20 seconds, then stopped, but not suddenly. About a minute or two later, it picked back up again. This continued a few more times before it stopped. This sound was distant, not quite deep into the woods but not at the tree line. There is a small unit of deer that sometimes sleeps in a clearing in the woods around that area, but they haven't been there in a few weeks. In some contexts, I am very much a late-night person. I used to work graveyard shifts due to my ability to stay alert so late into the night. This is how I know what all these common, and uncommon, woodland creatures sound like. And no, I did not look outside of my window. My thought process was, if I can't identify it, don't look for it. I still think I was right to not seek out an immediate answer. Additionally, the song was clear. I live on a farm on the side of a mountain in the middle of nowhere in British Columbia's interior. No cell service, neighbors are beyond shouting distance, a very in-your-own lifestyle out here. My trailer is at the top of this property, next to a barn, and is surrounded 360 degrees by forest except for the little road up here. The mountain Mount Ida has a long history with the aboriginal people of my area, I've been told stories of the mountain since I was a kid. Basically, the summary of every story is people are banished from the mountain because the spirits make it too dangerous. All sorts of weird things have been seen and have happened on this mountain. Last night, around 10.45 pm, I heard three sets of sirens rush by the road. Out here, you never hear sirens. In my accumulated 15 years here, I've heard one siren, and it was earlier this week. Basically, it just intrigued me at that point. It wasn't until about a half hour later or so that my power cut out. I'm already in bed at this point, the lights were out, and the only thing I actually noticed was that I had no Wi-Fi. Now that's always a heart stopper, because out here, no Wi-Fi means I'm entirely on my own. This makes me anxious for sure, but I'm more worried that I won't be able to call the fire department if something catches fire than anything. Then, out of nowhere, I hear this super sharp and loud cry, like a kid who just crashed on a bike. Hysterical crying from what sounds like a young child. My dogs are going absolutely nuts at the door. 
If you're familiar with cougars or ML, you should know that they can often mimic a child crying, and scary accurately too. So laying there as the tension builds, I'm just telling myself it's a cougar, that's all it is, just a cougar. For me, that's the best case scenario right now, that it's just a cougar. Dogs have finally calmed down, and I'm still just trying to get some shut eye when I hear the second sound. This was an ungodly sound that I've never heard in my life. This one sounded like a mix of every horror movie monster all in one. I can't even describe it. It was about 5 seconds of pure screeching, like a demonic banshee with the vocal cords of a T-Rex. The bass in it shook my bed. It was as if there was a concert-sized sound system hiding in the forest, blasting zombie vomit. I could taste my heartbeat at this point. My dogs are acting like rabies-ridden pit bulls towards the door, snarling and growling like whatever just screamed was on the other side of the door. I didn't know what to do at that point, I couldn't call or get in contact with anyone. The lights are off. I'm just lying there in the dark, utterly and completely scared. I was not about to get up and go investigate, it's the middle of winter, of course. I just laid there, checking my phone every 30 seconds to see if the Wi-Fi came back. Nothing else came after, though, I just ended up falling asleep at some point. As of this morning, everything is back to normal. Nothing creepy is going on, it powers back on. So take it as you will. Cougar in heat? Bigfoot coming out of hibernation? A thousand-year-old native ghost is trying to get me off his land. I'm not a very paranormal guy, and I have no idea what it could have been at this point. It's currently midnight, this all went down about 45 minutes ago. My brother decided to make a late-night run to the grocery store, but on his way back home, his tire exploded. He called my dad to come pick him up from the gas station that he managed to pull into. There are some sketchy people around that area, so my dad calls me and asks me to bring my tools and a jack so we can change the tire and escort him home so he wouldn't have to leave the car overnight. After the spare was on, my dad drove off in front, and my brother followed. I followed behind my brother. We live on a back road off of a back road with not many houses, lots of farmland, not much traffic, and lots of deer at night, so I turned on my LEDs that I use when I go off-roading so we could see deer well before they were a hazard. The fields stretch about a quarter mile from the road on either side, and the lights are bright enough so that I can just barely see the tree line past the fields. We get up to a bend in the road where a small patch of wood separates the field from a house beside it, and I see glowing eyes to my left. There were lots of deer out, so I was on high alert. I slowed down and kept an eye on it. The thing had arms. It had a humanoid body shape and a humanoid head. It was not far from the road, so it was lit up pretty brightly. I have no doubts in my mind about what I saw. I was only going about 15 miles an hour, it wasn't just a quick glimpse. I looked at it for at least 30 seconds before it was out of view. Once I realized that I had never seen anything like what I was seeing, I started honking my horn and pointing so that my brother and dad in front of me would look but by then they had already passed the patch of woods and couldn't see it. It didn't get scared by the noise like a deer would. It just stayed there, kind of swaying back and forth. I would guess it was around 6 to 7 feet tall when standing, but it appeared to be either hunched over or kneeling down. It was resting one elbow on something, and the other arm was straight. I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with Nosferatu, but his head and face looked very similar to Nosferatu's. It looked gaunt and pale, had pointed ears, and had glowing eyes. I am sure the glow was because of the lights I was shining at it, but that at least tells me it's nocturnal. I live in North Carolina, if that helps anyone figure out what the duck this is. I'm very concerned because it wasn't far from my home, and I've been hearing very strange noises at night the past few weeks. I took my puppy out to use the bathroom yesterday around 10pm, and I could hear something in the forest walking very slowly. I know it wasn't a deer because the puppy was barking and it didn't run off. I didn't have a flashlight, so I just kept my gun out in case it was a predator and it tried to eat my puppy. It was snapping big sticks, and it sounded heavy. I'm convinced it wasn't a bear because we don't live in bear country, we've never seen bears around here, and we go into the woods a lot. We also have a chain link fence all the way around our property line, including in the woods. We inspect it often, and I walked the perimeter today, and none of it was damaged. Whatever this is, it's agile and smart enough to climb or jump over a fence without noticeably damaging it. A few months ago, I also noticed a lot of scratches on the trees around my house, they were all no less than 7 feet off the ground, so in my mind, that took the mountain lion out of the equation. If anyone finds this description familiar, please let me know. This happened just last night. A friend and I made the very smart decision to hop on a train to Pluckley, near Ashford in Kent. Now, I've always been skeptical when it comes to things like ghosts, but we decided to visit the most haunted forest in the UK to see if we'd find anything. 
the woods themselves are a bit of a walk from the station. As it's in the middle of nowhere, there are just country roads, no pavement to walk on and no street lights for miles. Just a pitch black road with a clear night sky overhead. Other than the occasional car that drove past us, we had to depend on the light on our phones to see where we were going. This is where things started to get weird. As we were walking towards the silhouetted tree line, we walked through a very small cloud of mist. At this point, my friend's phone randomly decided to switch off. He had approximately 30% of the battery remaining at the time, and this was the first time his phone had ever done this. Shortly after restarting it, it crashed again. Putting it down to a mere coincidence, we continued towards the forest when, about 5 minutes later, the same thing happened to my phone. This had already spooked us, but the next thing we heard or saw really freaked us both out. We were walking along a straight road, trying to find the entrance to the woods, when my friend heard something rustling. I didn't hear anything at first, so we both stopped and listened. All of a sudden, the bush started moving, and we heard an unsettling noise coming from the other side. Something was definitely in there and had seen us, it did not run off like a normal wild animal would. We pretty much shed ourselves and sprinted back up the road to get away from whatever that thing was. As we got further away from the woods, we could both hear a loud, but distant, harrowing female scream coming from the woods as we walked back towards the station. Nothing else happened to us after that, and our phones have been working fine ever since, but I have no explanation for what we both experienced. My first encounter was last year. I have a German Shepherd, Hades, and a Husky pup, Ragnar. That day, I left university quite late. It was already dark outside. Usually, I don't mind taking them out at night. At night, I can let them run without their leashes. They are trained, and I know they are going to listen to me. Besides, I knew everyone knew them and wouldn't hurt them even if they were left outside. They have collars that light up since Hades is fully black and Ragnar is fully white, which makes it hard to see him during the winter. I could see them all the time. We walked for a while, and they were playing and running around. At some point, Hades stopped and started growling, looking into the wheat fields down the hill. I didn't think about it. There are bats, owls, and other critters around us. I leashed them, not wanting to run after them if they decided to chase something. After half an hour of non-stop growling, I had enough of it and decided to take Hades home and go out so Ragnar could run a bit more. I got home and expected him to go into his cage. He likes sleeping there, and I never locked them. That night, though, all he did was stand by the window, looking out. Since the pup was whining and wanting to go out again, I tried to drag Hades into the cage and lock him in until I got back. Who knew? Maybe he might try going out the window. I took a look out the window. On the parking lot below, I saw a black figure circling the cars. Thinking that it might be someone trying to steal, I got a flashlight and shone at it. It wasn't a thief. It wasn't human at all. It looked up, its eyes were reflecting the light from the flashlight. It was black, and its head looked very similar to Hades. It was standing on all fours, but when I shined the light, it stood up. The roofs of the cars were barely reaching their midsections. It let out a growl, which I later learned that many of the tenants had heard. Hades went wild, trying to bust out of the cage. Ragnar was whining even louder. I realized he didn't want to go out, he was trying to get as far away from the window as possible. The growl made me flinch, and I dropped the flashlight through the window. I tried to see it again, but it was too dark. I heard the crunching of snow as it left. The next morning, I went to find my flashlight and found huge dog-like footprints in the snow and a foul smell still lingering. I borrowed infrared binoculars from a hunter friend of mine. Ever since then, I have seen it four times in the forest, twice crossing the field, and once coming near the hill looking up. I and my roommate have been taking turns keeping watch at night when Hades starts growling. I don't take the dogs out at night, and Ragnar doesn't play and run around anymore. He just keeps pressing against my feet. I hope he grows out of it. I've had a very strange experience while solo camping in an extremely familiar stretch of woods. I visit this area often, either camping or day hiking. One weekend night, I set up camp about an hour before nightfall. I started a small cook fire about 20 yards from my camp, bears are extremely uncommon in this area. After I finished cooking, I tried reading my book before heading to bed, which is something I do often while camping. I had a very unusual feeling of uneasiness, something I had never felt out there before. I often camp in that exact spot, a small, dry section of ground in a creek bed. I found myself turning on my flashlight often and scanning around me. After doing this a half dozen times, I realized that I have never felt that uncomfortable looking for something that might be out there, like a kid scared of the dark. There have been plenty of times up in the NH White Mountains where I have heard animal noises and scanned with a flashlight, 
feeling much more calm and methodical while doing it and comfortable with the fact that I'm not alone in the wilderness. This was very different and difficult to describe. Unsure of why I have this feeling, I decided to just call it a night, get into my hammock, and go to sleep. Shortly after falling asleep, I woke up to a group of coyotes yapping and howling, it sounded like they had gotten a kill. I knew exactly what it was right after hearing it mention the direction and how far away they were. I wasn't unnerved by that sound in any way, as it is something I've heard many times. I calmly went back to sleep. About an hour or so after the coyote incident, I awoke again. I felt very disoriented at first, but I clearly heard distinct footsteps that were slow moving and heavy coming down the edge of the creek bed towards my cooking site. I was overtaken by so much dread and fear that I could not even move my hand to grab my handgun, which was literally up against my body in my hammock. I believe I was so fearful because of the distinct, human-like steps that I heard. Unlike the coyotes that woke me up before, this was an extremely uncommon occurrence. Whatever it was, I walked slowly and steadily to the cook's site, stopped for a brief moment, and then continued through my camp until I could no longer hear it as it moved down the creek bed. I've camped several times since then, not in that location, as I am too uncomfortable, and have not encountered anything close to that feeling of dread again. This happened a few years ago. I couldn't sleep, so I was sitting at my desk. We had recently moved houses, and my desk was positioned directly next to my window so that I could see the flower field. Our closest neighbors were miles away from us. I decided to open my window. For context, my room was on the second floor, and I never opened this window. It is extremely rare for me to open windows because I have terrible allergies. It was almost midnight, and I decided to open this window next to my desk to let some air in. I should have known something was off because it was extremely quiet. There were no cricket noises or anything. This window had no screen, and when I looked out, it was pitch black and dark outside, I couldn't see a thing. My sister and I loved The Little Vampire, a cute movie. For anyone who knows the whistling scene, my sister and I would replicate it with each other when we were kids. I decided to whistle. I'm not very good, but I managed to get out one very long shrill whistle. Everything was still silent outside until I heard a whistle. I have an extremely good relative pitch, what some would call a perfect pitch. It was my exact same whistle repeated to me. I literally froze, and then it did it again, so I whistled back. However, an ear-splitting whistle or shriek returned. It was as loud as a train passing by. I fell out of my chair, scrambling to close the window. Everything in my soul was telling me to run. My mom ran downstairs and asked me if I heard it too. I was literally shaking for hours after that. We moved about a year later, but I never opened that window again. I would like to hear any possible explanations you all have. The only thing I know is that I never want to encounter that again. In northern Idaho, deep in the Rocky Mountains, there is a cabin that runs a cattle ranch. Chris's brother knows the owner and invited Chris to spend a weekend up there for some hunting and hiking. The brothers gathered their supplies and a few of their best friends and took off to the mountains. As they were driving up the winding Idaho roads, his brother issued a cryptic warning. Sometimes the cattle escape into the woods and need to be tracked down. The owner of the ranch has seen strange creatures in the forest. I'm not messing around, everyone laughed and didn't take the warning seriously. Within the hour, they arrived at the cabin. On the second day in the mountains, Chris decided to go on an afternoon hunt with one of his friends. They drove down a back road into the forest until the road ended a few miles from the cabin. They got out and walked to the nearby creek, then split off, with one person going upstream and one person going downstream. After walking for a while, Chris came to a silty deposit, where he noticed a foul smell and a broken pine tree that was green and healthy. The trunk was snapped in the direction of the water. There were four finger indentations in the tree bark, like it had been squeezed and pulled down by a massive hand. Sap bubbled from the compressed bark. On the ground, he discovered numerous huge footprints with five toes stamped into the silt. He followed them and counted 73 beautiful tracks that led to another snapped green pine tree. This tree also had big finger marks on it and was facing in the direction of the water. Tracks danced all around this tree. The smell was now overwhelming. Chris became so spooked that he immediately ran back to the truck. His friend had shot a deer, and they quickly drove back to the cabin with it. At the cabin, Chris explained the situation to everyone. That night, half a dozen men from the cabin armed themselves, each with a rifle and a pistol, and returned by truck to the end of the dirt road. They parked the truck facing the creek and then walked on foot to the edge of the water. It was a moonless, starry night, but the horrible smell still lingered. The band of hunters waited and, at one point, howled into the night, calling for the creature. Chris thought he could hear something moving in the forest, but the creek was too loud to be sure. 
he decided to walk alone upstream and into the woods to get a clearer sound. He could hear that there was definitely something big making its way through the pines. He ran back to the hunters and warned them that something was approaching. Moments later, from both up and downstream, they began to hear branches snapping and footsteps thudding. The sounds came from both directions, closing in on the group. The footsteps grew louder and louder until the booming crunch of a log under the surface of the mud spooked them so much that they all ran back to the truck. In less than two minutes, they made it back to the vehicle. The moment they fired up the truck and turned on the headlights, they could see two massive bipedal, hairy creatures moving up the creek in the location they had just retreated from. The creature's eyes shone from the truck's headlights. All of the men had clear shots, but all took flight back to the cabin in terror. The stench greeted them upon their return. They feared that with the slain deer outside, the creatures would be drawn to the property. They all slept curled up with their guns that night, but no more signs of the creatures would be found. I told you, little brother, I was not effing around. He thinks he ran into a family of them. There was a wild look in his eyes as he turned to me and said, I know they exist. I live in a rural area that is slowly being developed. My house was built on a wooded lot that is fairly dense and in an old forest. The trees are very tall, about 2.5 times taller than a two-story home. Also, my neighborhood, if you can even call it that, is just a few houses built on a long gravel road. The entirety of the houses are built within this old, dense forest, which extends about a mile in every direction. These homes are only about three years old. I take my dog for a walk on the gravel road several times a day, but the night walks tend to be the most eerie. I have come along with coyotes that creepily watch us from the woods until I shout at them. Actually, just a couple weeks ago, I walked up on a bear. I have learned to bring a bright, 1000 lumen, flashlight on my walks. Now, for the paranormal part. Sometimes, walking in the woods can be eerily quiet. Anyone who has spent a good amount of time in the woods knows that the woods are actually pretty noisy. However, on these nights, it's virtually silent. There was no wind in the leaves. There was no clacking of swaying tree branches. No crickets. It's on these nights that I hate the walks. I get the sensation that I'm being watched. Sometimes I even get goosebumps because the sensation that we're being watched is so powerful. On occasion, I can hear branches or tree limbs snapping. Now, in thick woods, it's totally normal to hear a random limb break off and fall to the ground. But the sound of a limb breaking naturally and the sound of one being snapped are very different. Sometimes I can hear branches snapping more frequently than I should, as if several people were hiding in the woods, snapping branches off of trees. Most times, though, I just hear them around me, but I can't find a cause. However, two nights ago, I heard the branches snapping again. This was very clearly the sound of intentional branches being snapped but the sound was coming from high in the treetops. I shined my light but couldn't see anything, so I kept walking. Then, more branches snapped. I stopped and looked again, but nothing. I started to walk again, then another branch in the treetop snapped again. This time I just kept walking, and as I did, I could hear the sound of snapping branches in the treetop following me. This continued for about two minutes as I started fast walking to my home, with branches being snapped behind me in the trees. Then, tonight, which prompted this story, I again had the weird, uncomfortable feeling, but the walk was uneventful. As I was almost home, my dog was sniffing around a bush. He ended up getting a small branch stuck on his leash. I grabbed the branch and threw it back in the woods, hearing it hit a bush. However, the moment I turned to walk, I heard something behind me, which startled us. I turned around to see the same branch, it was a fairly distinctly shaped branch, almost like a large but skinny wishbone of a turkey, which I just threw into the woods back at my feet. I looked into the woods, but nothing was there. Something had thrown the branch back at my feet. I went straight home after that, completely spooked.